Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 27. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. <clears throat> New Living Translation. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. So... I promised yesterday that I would share um, a testimony. However, I have to give you a disclaimer. I have to be careful how I sh word or share this testimony because, um, you know, a as you know, you'll know from your life that some experiences involve people close in your life. And the way you talk about those people, they are still God's children and you have to be extremely careful. So I always try um, to talk about situations without revealing too much about the people purely out of respect and out of uh you know honoring the fact that they too are god's children however you know scenarios situations like that we go through in life they, they they demonstrate the workings of god in so many ways and it's always worth discussing those i always find when i discuss these issues with people that are close to me more and more god impresses on me it's not so much about um <clears throat> It's not so much about not talking about the situations. It's good to talk about situations because we learn from them and we can highlight how the scriptures apply to those situations. It's good to talk about your experiences. However, you have to be careful how you have to be careful the, of the spirit in which you discuss those scenarios. For example, are you discussing out of unforgiveness? Are you discussing out of uh bitterness towards those people or are you just genuinely trying to draw lessons from those situations and demonstrate the workings of god in those situations it's a very very fine line and so i say this only to say that um as 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 um testified as or as as promised yesterday i did say i was going to share a testimony of basically how um you know scenarios in your life where people become your enemies it's it's amazing how sometimes you know, I'm sure everybody feels the same about this, that sometimes the people who you would have thought are closest to you can, you know, be your enemies in the sense that they can really act in ways that are extremely, extremely hurtful to you. And so in those scenarios, you can't help but feel like so-and-so is my enemy. But you've got to be careful, again, how you go forward, you know, given the, the, the reality of that situation. Because what you want is you want God's grace to rest on you and you don't want to offend the spirit of God by being bitter and being angry and gossiping and slandering other people, even though they're in the wrong, even though they're in the wrong. Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who uh, spitefully use you. So in this scenario, I found myself in a situation where I was badly hurt by someone. Again, I can't share how specifically because that could that easily identifies the, the, the person, but I was badly hurt and I've been hurt by people loads of times. Okay. So this is just one example. Um, I've been, I was hurt by this individual and on, on top of them hurt, being hurtful, they, you know, it, <clears throat> they, they, they made the situation worse by doing more, by trying to basically try to make out like I was in the wrong, by uh, further compounding the situation. Um, and then what they did was they, they basically then went on, carried on with their lives and they continued to, to do what they, they wanted to do with their lives. They continued to, you know, let me just say, at the end of the day, all of us are always seeking to improve their, our lives, aren't we? So let me say, th th this individual was particularly blessed by God in certain areas and God continued to bless them. And I remember speaking to them one day and said, you know, I was very angry with you at one go, but actually I pray that God blesses you even more because as God blesses you, I, I believe that he will show you just what you did to me. Because I don't feel like at this point you fully understand what you did to me and how badly you hurt me, right? I actually said that to this person. And here's why I say this, guys. When God blesses your enemies or the people who hurt you, it's not as... My first instinct when, when this person was blessed, I remember contacting a man of God and saying, look what God has done for this person. How is it that God is able to keep doing more for the people that hurt other people and yet doesn't seem to remember those who've been hurt? 
And I remember the man of God saying, he used this very scripture. He said, God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. I had no idea what he meant at the time. This was going back four years or so. I didn't understand what he meant. In fact, I just thought, oh, okay, fine. I, it felt like he, 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 he was basically trying to ignore me and trying to downplay how I was feeling. That's how I felt when this man of God responded this way. And so he, he left me with the scripture and to this day, in, in fact, sadly, this man of God has passed on. He's passed on to eternity. He, he, that's all he, he responded this way to the scenario, which to this day, actually, now, now that I, I'm, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I am seeking God more than I did at the time. I, I see more and more the need to respond to life scenarios using a scripture. There's always a scripture that speaks to your situation, guys. And no, don't look for the negative scriptures. There are many Psalms, for example, where, as we know, David prayed for the demise of his enemies. Don't focus on those. Yes, they are part of the word of God. But then Jesus later on said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Pray for them genuinely. And so when I said this to this enemy, of mine and I have to refer to them as an enemy because in terms of what they did to me and, and how I felt about them at the time, they played the position of an enemy. So that's why I refer to them. I, I don't see them as an enemy now. I try to to let go of all that. When I say try, I mean I may get it wrong sometimes, but I repent and start again, right? A righteous man may fall seven times, but yet shall he rise again, right? Um and so I, when I said to this person, may God bless you so you may see the error of your ways, I genuinely meant that. Why? Because I started to realize, according to the scripture that this man of God uh, gave to me, God uses the foolish things of this world. God can turn around. You know, the wisdom of God is way above ours. The way that we see things as people, when you see your enemy uh, get blessed and get better and better and better, it's, it can be extremely hurtful. It can cause you to be even more bitter. It can cause you to be even more angry. But I'll tell you this. Um, the way that God has blessed um, this particular individual is in such a way that honestly, um, the way that this person wanted to carry on at the time, they wanted to basically make, li make life living hell for me for the rest of my life. But I can tell you to this day that this person is so blessed, so blessed to the point where he literally has no time. God has kept him busy. God has kept him so busy that they have no time. They have no time to pursue me. They have no time to even, you know, they, they have no time to execute any of the plans they had against me. Now, someone mentioned in the, in the chat um, and commented about how they've experienced a, a person in their life who's narcissistic and, and all the games they play. And I have to say, this particular individual I dealt with um, is very much narcissistic. And so, those of you who've dealt with narcissistic people, oh my gosh, you know just how relentless a narcissist can be. They are relentless in the way they try to put you down. They are relentless in the way they pursue you. They are relentless in the way they are constantly spreading news about you and about how bad you are and about how, honestly, the, 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 there's a lady, again, I always, I always talk about this lady. She's called Tiffany Buckner. Um, her channel's called Anoint, Anointed Fire. I can't articulate in the way she articulates. I can't articulate just the, 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 the tendencies of narcissists and, and how they affect uh, people of God, basically. I can't possibly do it much justice, but I'll, I'll attempt to in these remaining two minutes, right? But I, I, I urge you to find this channel. It'll bless you. Okay, but in short, people who are who are narcissists, they are the narcissism is basic narcissist. Yeah, the, the term narcissist is very much a psychological term, but the spiritual term for that very character is the Jezebel spirit. If you've experienced someone who has a Jezebel spirit, they are extremely conniving, manipulating, intimidating. You name it, everything they 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 just do it. They are they traumatize people. Let me just put it that way. And so this person I was dealing with was, is extremely narcissistic, right? But I can tell you that when God blesses them, that can be a, that can be the blessing, the biggest blessing for you. And it, it taught me how actually pray for your enemies, for God to bless them. Their blessings become a distraction guys, honestly, because if you look at the workings of a narcissist, if a narcissist were to pursue you for a very long time, they, they'd literally, they, they'd kill you. Let me just put it that way, right? Not to be dramatic, but they would. 
Um, so uh, pray for the blessing of your enemy. Rejoice in the blessing of your enemy. God uses the foolish things of this world. God uses what we, what we, you know, the, God thinks in the opposite. What we see as a blessing to someone can actually and 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 make you cry and feel like, oh, but why why is God blessing that individual? No, it should be the opposite. Instead of you crying and being upset that God is blessing your enemies more than is blessing you, rejoice that God is blessing your enemies because actually that becomes your escape. The blessing of your enemy becomes your escape. It becomes the way by which you think, oh my gosh, look at this person. They are so busy. When I say this person is busy, I mean busy. Every once in a while, they, they, they you know, they get in touch and ask about this and ask about that. And, um, it, it, you know, it, it, this person is so close that they are always going to be a, a part of my life. Let me just put it that way without revealing too much. They're always going to be a part of my life. However, um, also the, my experiences with this individual have been extremely toxic and I know from observing other people, they may not be able to articulate and, 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 and call the scenarios toxic that they've been involved with this person in, but this person is a toxic individual. The only way for, you know, the, that God has given me an escape plan has been through blessing this person. And while this upset me to begin with in the first place, I realize more and more just how much of a blessing this is to me. I, I, honestly, everything this person attempted to do to me then in the past has become a blessing for me now. This is the kind of God we serve, guys. He can create a way out of situations that you think, how am I even going to escape this? When you're literally in the jaws of the enemy, when you're literally, when the devil has you in the palm of his hands, this is an, God can make a, a way of escape. This should encourage someone. I, I pray it encourages is someone when you're looking at your situation and you think how do i escape it's one thing when you're dealing with situations that are generic and don't involve specific people but when you are trapped in the hands of a specific individual honestly it can feel like <clears throat> it can feel like there's no end to your problems there are people who are trapped in marriages in or we have parents or relatives or they are just close to extremely toxic people, narcissistic people, and it feels like there's no escape. Nowadays, there's so much information about narcissism. I can tell you that God makes a way where there's no way. I can testify. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a